What's up, winners? And welcome to uh, Getting Known, how to rapidly build celebrity, establish credibility, and become the icon in your industry. Now, uh, this video is going out ex exclusively to those of you on the winners list. I told you I was gonna be doing some stuff like this, and this is one of those things. So. I have been locked away for a couple of days working on course content for the two-day intensive communication and branding workshop that's going to be happening on August 2nd and 3rd, and I wanted to take a little bit of time and pull some of the content out of that course and give you a little preview on what we're going to be doing over the course of that two days. Now, this is a really small section of the program of the workshop that's happening on the back half of the workshop. So the first part we're going to be talking about who are the people that you want uh, and really clearly defining that and you're going to be using some doing some things that you typically are not used to doing in trying to determine who that person is and then once we're done with that we're going to be talking about who you are and so how do we frame and create uh, a persona for you that is going to be highly attractive and fascinating to the people that are most likely to want what it is that you have. So um, once we get done with that, we're going to start talking, we're going to spend a lot of time talking about story. How do you craft story? What kinds of stories do you need? Uh, what are the ideas behind uh, the different methods and the different frameworks for stories? Because frankly, selling is stories. They're one and the same thing. And then once we're done with all of those things and we've compiled all that information, then we're going to move into the back half of the training. We're going to talk about, well, how now do, how do we create content that is going to turn us into a recognized celebrity, a recognized authority figure in our industry, and then more importantly, then how do we sell what we have once they've come to us? And so in this section, I'm going to be talking with you guys about the six ways to rapidly build celebrity in whatever it is that you do. And there are more than, obviously there are more than six, but you kind of try and chop it down and you say, okay, what are the top six ways that you can go out being totally unknown, not knowing anybody from Adam, and having no name recognition, no authority, no celebrity, nothing, and then very quickly start establishing yourself as a major player. Now I've done this more than one time. So I started it first in the currency markets when I started my uh, education company and I needed to establish myself as a recognized authority and expert in that field when I was surrounded by people who had decades of experience uh, both in the niche and uh, in the trading niche in general and also in currencies. And so this was a this was a big monumental feat because the currency markets trading in general is one of the oldest and most well established niches on earth. And so to try and move into that, you're going up against people who have, you know, long-standing track records and massive amounts of, uh, massive amounts of presence and notoriety in the field. And I had none of that. And so I had to use some of these techniques to quickly establish myself as an expert in that field. And then when I started the podcast and I wanted to begin to establish myself as a voice for economics and politics, uh, specifically libertarian politics, uh, I had to change entirely and I had to find people that I could, uh, or find techniques and ways that I could very rapidly gain authority and celebrity in that particular niche. Because again, I'm completely unknown. And so let's talk about these six ways and how you can begin to implement them in your industry. So the first one, how do we rapidly gain celebrity? Well, the first way is to borrow it, okay? And this is a lot simpler than you think. So um, unless my editing skills fail me, what's gonna pop up on the screen right now is an image of me and, uh, and Kevin Harrington. So Kevin Harrington, as you know, probably from Shark Tank, and he's a very popular and well-known in, in business and entrepreneurship. Uh, he, uh, he's also written a book called, or co-wrote a book called KPI, or Key Person of Influence, uh, which was a pretty decent book if you guys want to read it. And um, what I, this was a picture of me and him backstage right before we were going to walk on stage together and I was going to introduce him uh, in front of about 2,000 people. And so what I am doing in this image is nothing more than borrowing Kevin's celebrity. You see, your proximity to celebrity automatically increases your own. And so if you happen to be, this is why it's, it's important that if you, you go out of your way, even if it feels awkward or it's weird, that you walk up and you say, hey, can we get a picture? If you're in a position to be able to be photographed or to be seen near other celebrities, specifically, not, not even necessarily specifically ones that are into, in your niche or in your industry, that's helpful. 
but it's more important that you be seen with people who are known as celebrities. So it would be just as effective for me to be photographed, say, next to, uh, I, I don't know, um, uh, uh, Harrison Ford, as it would be Kevin Harrington. Just the fact that I am in proximity to him has a massive benefit to me in terms of my celebrity. But the, the complaint I get the most on this is, well, Jason, I don't know any celebrities. Nobody's asking me to speak on stage. And so how I, this, this obviously is not one that I can use. And nothing could be further from the truth. You can borrow celebrity in other ways than just being close to them or being pictured with them or anything like that. So one of the things that you can do is you can quote them. So I'm very, I'm, I'm very fond of Joe Polish's quote, every ethical dollar earned is a byproduct of value creation. So I might talk about an event I was at. So I, every year I go down to the uh, Traffic and Conversion Summit in San Diego to study marketing and the latest trends from people who are a lot smarter at that stuff than I am. And I talk about the people who were there, what they were saying as though we were at the event together and my proximity to celebrity, my proximity to them, us being at the same event together, instantly raises my credibility, my celebrity uh, in, in the niche that I run in. So you don't have to actually know them. You can borrow their celebrity by using them as an example, by pointing out something that you learned from them in a course that you might have taken or something they said at an event. Uh, you never know. There's a million different ways that you can begin to borrow celebrity. So start thinking about who do I know, where can I go, who can I, who can I research and find information on that I can then use to bolster my own celebrity by simply borrowing theirs. The second way to do it is to attack it. Okay. This is very common. It's what I call punching up. So what we want to do is you can find people in your industry, in your industry, in your niche, wherever you're at, there is somebody in it that is doing, that is, uh, has achieved a level of notoriety, but you believe that you have a better solution or you believe in doing things a different way. So for me, one of my big things is cold calling. So if you happen to be a guy who promotes the value and the necessity of cold calling in your business uh, and in your sales career, I'm immediately going to attack that. Because I, and if, the bigger you are, the better. Because the bigger you are, the more notoriety and the more, uh, and the more attraction I'm going to get by attacking you and that idea. Because I happen to think that cold calling is one of the most inefficient and worst uses of your time, especially if you do all of the other things that I'm going to teach you in the two-day branding workshop. What you should have is people naturally being attracted to you. And then you're not having to go out and find and solicit business. Business is literally coming to you and asking, uh, okay, is this guy right for me? Is what he teach me, is what he's going to teach me actually going to help me get where I want to go? Or will his service, product, whatever, increase my life in some way. And so look around in your industry, try and find somebody, and you don't have to be mean about this. This doesn't have to be a thing. Honestly and truthfully, the meaner and more aggressive you are, the more, the more notoriety you'll receive, but it doesn't always work long term. So you don't necessarily have to be mean in order for this to work, but you do have to attack the idea. So I did a video not long ago, uh, in, you know, really attacking Gary Vanderchuk and his something he said about uh, money, about not buying stuff or not having things, and that if you have a lot of things or you want certain things, that somehow that is some sort of moral or uh, or lifestyle deficiency in you. And I just happen to believe that whatever you want, you should have. So if you want a G5 jet and you want to drive a Ferrari and you want to go out and make the money and earn it so that you can do that, that and have those things, well, who is Gary Vanderchuk to attack you and tell you that there's something wrong with that? And it is, he, he has the luxury at this stage of his life to, to criticize others for their, for their desire for wealth and, and their desire for something better when he has all of these things. And so I, I took the time to attack him and that, I mean, tagging his name in that stuff brought a lot of people to me. And the fact is, I don't care whether they leave liking me or hating me. I just want them to know me. See, celebrity is not about getting people to like you. Celebrity is about getting people to know you and to recognize you as an authority, as a celebrity. Because everything that you're going to do after that is going to become infinitely easier once you have done that. Third, create a common enemy. 
a common enemy. You see this a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot in politics where the Republicans are always attacking the Democrats and the Democrats the Republicans and they're attacking the president and he becomes the poster child for evil and wrongdoing in the world, whether it's Donald Trump or Barack Obama, whoever it is, they become a symbol of a common enemy that we need to defeat. If you move into libertarian or anarchist circles, they start talking about the deep state. Uh, actually, that's even made its way into common vernacular in the, in the conservative community as well. But the deep state is this kind of elusive and very hard to define enemy that we have to attack and that we have to hate and that we have to bind ourselves together against to fight. Uh, and so you see this in religion as well with um, all of the people in the world who are going to try and get you to do things that your religion says you shouldn't be doing. So finding a common enemy creates cohesion and it creates a bond between you and your followers, prospects, clients, etc. In saying that we are in this together, we need to be here, you need to be doing these things because we're, we're fighting a common enemy here. So look around and if you don't have one, create one. It's very easy to create one. So um, in my business, one of the things that I try and do is I try and point out just how foolish it is to be focused on things like funnels and things like Facebook advertising when you haven't done anything to establish brand, to establish identity, and, and to establish yourself as somebody who is worth listening to. And see, people generally do it backwards. They come up with a product, they put it out there, they start running Facebook ads, the Facebook ads don't sell because they don't really know what they're doing and nobody knows who they are. And so it ends up coming off the rails and most of them end up failing miserably because they haven't taken the time to do any of this stuff. And so I will attack that idea uh, anytime I can. So it's, it doesn't have to be a person, it can be an idea or a belief. As I said, cold calling can be your common enemy definitely bind salespeople together. So, borrow it, attack it, create a common enemy. Um, let's see, do something, of, do something out of the ordinary. Do something out of the ordinary. What do we see? Yeah, this can be something simple, like going skydiving. Okay? Going skydiving is something that the average person doesn't do, and so if you're seen doing it, automatically it raises your celebrity. Now, if you are, for example, talking about a, a, attacking a common enemy while you're on your way to go skydiving, you combine these into something that is extremely effective at building and raising your celebrity. Anytime you go on vacation or you go out to a decent restaurant or a unique restaurant, start thinking of your life in chunks of unique experiences or out of the ordinary experiences that you can use. Now this is a relatively easy one for us to understand today that was not the case maybe 15 years ago because of social media. So see we're all really good at faking our lives now on social media and presenting just a really idealistic clean cut version of and, uh, and perfect world that we want to show to everybody else. And so people kind of understand this I guess at their core now, but I want you to really start thinking about what are some of the things that I could do that would be out of the ordinary. Maybe it's going and I don't know, I, 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 you got to think about it. So maybe it's changing the way that you dress. Maybe it's changing your hairstyle. Maybe uh, it's, it's wearing glasses or choosing to, uh, or, or choosing to drive a, a, a very unique kind of car, right? Whatever it is, things that you do that are out of the ordinary from the typical cookie cutter um, polo shirt and khaki pant loafer person that we tend to encounter in our lives. Find ways to do that and that will also help to increase your celebrity. And then finally, um, actually no that's not, that's not finally, what am I doing here? Tie yourself to current events. Okay, so by tying yourself to current events, what you're going to do is it, you essentially do the same thing as when you're borrowing celebrity. So you're going to go out and find something in the news. One of the things that I did right after the Payless, uh, Payless, you guys are going to watch a video that I'll show you during the, the two-day intensive training. 
um, where Payless went out and actually started a luxury brand, a luxury store. And they, uh, they put all of their shoes in there and marked them up like 3,000%. And then they invited a bunch of influencers over to take a look at their plessy shoe store that was supposed to be European, and people ended up raving about the shoes and paying $400, $600 for a pair of $30 shoes. Well, that is incredibly telling in terms of the way people think and what influence can do and the way imagery and perception can raise the value of something, uh, you know, 2x, 3x, 10x, 1000x. And so I, as soon as that, that article was released, I went out and did a video on it. And I aligned myself with that current event that was directly related to my niche and showed them how what I teach can actually be applied in real life and was applied in real life by a very large brand and how they were able to fool a lot of people just simply by using some of the influence techniques that we talk about on a daily basis. So by tying yourself to current events, you give yourself instant credibility, especially when what you are talking about relates specifically to what it is that you teach or do. Now the last one, Number six is to be attacked. This is one of the, this is, this is a great one and it's good because you can usually be attacked even if you don't have a lot of name, re, name credibility or you're not that well recognized uh, because there are lots of really pathetic people out there with one or two followers or, an, or a Twitter account with, with, with nothing going on who are more than willing to jump out and criticize you for anything that you do. And so what I would tell you is in terms of being attacked is anytime you find somebody who is coming after you and trying to, hang on, I got this light screwing up on me. Okay. Anytime you've got somebody who's coming after you and who is uh, mocking you or attacking you for something that you're doing, I don't want you to address them specifically because we don't ever want to note those people in particular, but we do want to note that we're being attacked. And so we come out and we say, hey, I was on social media and I've been, you know, there are a bunch of people who are coming after me and they're saying that I'm full of it and yada, yada. Well, let me explain why they're wrong and I'm right. Again, one of the things that we talk about in terms of branding and in terms of positioning is that we never want to apologize. Whatever we say, whatever we do, because we recognize that everything we say and do matters, we're very careful about what we say and what we put out uh, in terms of our brand. And so whatever we've chosen to say, we're confident in taking on that line. And so then what we want to do is anytime someone attacks us for what we believe, we want to lean in and double down. Okay? So anytime we're attacked by someone, we want to explain, no, 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 not only am I not wrong, let me go one step further and let me explain why I'm right even more than I thought I was right before. So being attacked is an easy way for you to increase your celebrity because mainly it happens all the time. We're on social media. It's not that hard to get attacked by anybody if you have any presence on social media. So number one, borrow celebrity. Number two, attack it. Three, create a common enemy. Four, do something out of the ordinary tie yourself to current events, and finally be attacked. Guys, if you haven't signed up for the two-day intensive communication and branding workshop, you need to do it right now. This is going to be the most important two days that you spend working on your business and on your brand in, in, for the next two years. What you will learn in this two-day seminar is going to radically change the way you communicate with your audience and the way that um, you communicate your message, who you are, what you offer, and why. And ultimately, what it's going to do is it's going to allow you to charge a lot more for what you do and, uh, and uh, allow you to start drawing people to you rather than you having to go out. So it's going to make your sales process, your, your, um, your communication process with your audience and your followers and the most ideal prospects for you infinitely easier. So go ahead and sign up. The link is underneath this video. It's uh, becometheicon.com. Watch the video, it tells you everything. But this is just one tiny little section of what we're gonna be covering over that two day event and you need to be there. So go check it out and I'll talk to you guys soon.